Hey y'all, I'm Landon. I'm Emily. I'm Anna. And I'm Galileo. And we're having fun at home with Camp Orkyla. Today we're going to be talking about tree identification. All the trees we'll be talking about today can be found here at Camp Orkyla and throughout the Pacific Northwest. These are all evergreen trees, which means that their leaves stay green through all seasons. Today we'll be using three different ways to identify these trees. Their leaves, their bark, and the cones or fruit that they produce. Hi there! You're looking at a western red cedar. Actually, you're looking at multiple western red cedars, also known as Duja plicata. The western red cedar is an evergreen tree with small needle-like leaves that often look like a feather, like this one. It also has tiny cones that cluster up in groups like these. As you can see, the western red cedar has a reddish brownish bark that's very thin and often appears to be shredding, almost like someone took a giant cheese grater to the tree and now the bark is flaking off. This bark is very special because it has a compound in it which allows it to be decay resistant, meaning it doesn't rot. The Lummi people use the western red cedars to create longhouses, canoes, kayaks, all because of this decay resistant bark that they have. Western red cedars like moist acidic soil. This moist acidic soil allows western red cedars to grow up to 100 to 175 feet in height. It also allows them to grow for over a thousand years. This is Arbutus menziesii or the Pacific Madrone. I think it's a pretty cool tree. This is an evergreen tree, which means that it doesn't lose its leaves in the winter. But unlike most other evergreen trees, it doesn't have needles. It has these broad leaves that are about one inch wide and three inches long. Um, it produces clusters of white flowers, none of which are blooming right now, um, that go on to become fruit that feed deer and birds in the autumn. One of the things that makes Madronas very distinguishable is its bark. It has red peeling bark that falls away to show this very, very smooth orange bark beneath it. Um, it's beautiful and very popular with artisans for woodcrafts. It grows in dry, rocky places, um, like this outcrop at Camp Orkyla, um, where most other plants really can't make a living. It's a very tenacious tree. This is a Douglas fir, otherwise known as the Pseudosuga menziesii. Its needles grow in a circular pattern around the branch and are often between three quarters of an inch and one and a half inches long. They are thin towards the base and rounded towards the tip. This is a Douglas fir cone. These bracts that come off it often resemble mouse tails and are one of the defining characteristics of the Douglas fir. Douglas firs are sun dependent, meaning they need open space to grow. This means they are often the first trees to grow up after a fire, and means they grow very straight and tall, making them good for lumber. They can reach up to 300 feet tall and live up to 1,000 years, but are often between 80 and 200 feet tall. My favorite thing about the Douglas fir is the bark. It is reddish brown and deeply grooved, making it slightly resistant to fire and also slightly easier to climb. One of my favorite trees, a western hemlock or a pseudo heterophylla. It's easily identifiable by its mismatched needles, its small brown cones about the size of a peanut M&M, and its droopy top branch called a leader. This one's just a baby, and one of my favorite things about hemlocks is that they're often found growing out of nurse logs like this one. When it grows up, it'll be 100 to 150 feet tall and 400 to 500 years old, and its bark will be thick, dark brown, and furrowed. It likes to grow in cool, moist areas just like this. Now that you know how to identify a tree, what kind of trees can you identify in your own backyard or in your local park? Take a picture or draw a picture or maybe describe your trees in a poem and send it in to us. Let's see what you got. <laughs>